Without energy, we don't have a life. This crazy war on fossil fuels will come to an end. We need more energy than ever before. Why are we dependent on Venezuela, Russia, and uh, uh, Saudi Arabia instead of uh, doing it here at home? Welcome back to uh, Freedom Fest 2023 here in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, this man next to me needs no introduction. Uh, this is the legendary Steve Forbes. He has taken some time out of his day to talk about a couple of different things. Uh, before we hop into Is It, which I'm really excited to talk about, Steve said one of the boldest things that I've heard from anyone dealing with the economy in at least the last five years. What is it that you predicted yesterday on your panel? Uh, ultimately, the U.S., the United States is going to go to the gold standard which we we're on for 180 years. It worked. You don't get inflation on the gold standard and you get a better economy because what it does is give a stable value to the dollar. You know, 60 minutes an hour, we assume 60 minutes. We don't float the clock each day. Right. We don't float the number of inches in a foot each day. We don't number of, float the number of ounces in a pound, so you buy a pound of cheese. You don't have to worry, was well, it 13 ounces, is it 18 ounces? Uh -huh. Same thing with money. Give it a stable value, and by golly, better things will happen. Couldn't agree with you more, but there are many issues along this pathway. So I've heard from many economists that we talk to regularly that a gold standard isn't possible. What is it that leads you to believe that we'll be in this situation? Because I think everyone, if they understood the gold standard and the history of the gold standard, no one would be advocating against it. So how did you get to this determination where you're confident enough to say in public that I believe we'll be on a gold standard by 2024 or 2025? I think uh, it'll be probably a little longer. You gotta get a debate, you gotta get it in the public square, discuss it, people who marinate on it, think about it. So I think in the next few years, I think we're gonna get the debate and I think circumstances are going to, uh, events are going to uh, push for it. As people wonder why in the world are we stuck in the mud? Why can't we move ahead the way we've done in the past? And let's try something that's worked in the past. Let's do it again. Now, a lot of economists suppose it because it means they're not going to be as important anymore, <laughs> uh, manipulating money and the like. And, uh, but the arguments against it uh, don't hold up when you examine the true facts of the situation. And uh, so I think uh, it's going to come. It keeps, gold keeps, for a variety of reasons, keeps its value better than anything else in the world. Mm -hmm. Not perfect, but better than anything else. So you want to go with 4,000 years of experience, or do you want to trust a PhD from Harvard? Good Lord, I couldn't have said that any better. And by the way, we're in a perfect storm for a gold standard discussion, right? The storm that we're seeing in front of us, there's 17, 18, 100 different ways that you can describe why it's important to have a gold standard at this point in the economy, because we're watching the ramifications of 100 years of fiat currency, right, from different nations around the world. But especially here, never before in my lifetime have I heard so many people talking about the fact that our currency is backed by nothing. Well, and that's happened since the 1970s. From the time of George Washington in the 1970s, the dollar, unless it was war, uh, was on a gold standard. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we became the greatest nation in the world. It grew from a handful of uh, small subsistence farming entities on the East Coast to the mightiest industrial nation in the world. And since we went off the gold standard, it's not a coincidence our average growth rate has fallen by a third. Mm. So if you do that over 50 years, today the household income is $70,000, roughly 72,000, median income. If we'd had the normal growth rates that we had for the first 180 years of our country's existence, that household would have a incomes of $110,000 a year. Significant. 40,000. Over time, those things add up. So wouldn't people be happier with a stable dollar, 40 or $50,000 more of income? Hmm. Life would be a little better. Right, if you have gold standard and a reduction in taxes, you have a prosperous nation that can actually steward the rest of the world properly and be an inspiration for the rest of the world. Yes. You know, when Ronald Reagan cut taxes back in the 1980s, big time, 50 nations in a few years followed our example. Well, and that's the way it's worked. I mean, that's what America has been, is the beacon of light, the beacon of hope in many different regions. And the, the further we continue with the processes that we're in, from a legislative standpoint, from a monetary standpoint, from a practical sociological standpoint, 
we're making life worse for ourselves and it's really something that's simply solved by a gold standard. I couldn't have been, I can tell you, Steve, from ear to ear is probably where my smile began yesterday <laughs> hearing that because I've been talking about that's a need in this nation. So anything I can do to help to promote this idea or spark the debate, and I'm just a, a nobody out of nowhere, but if I can help, I will certainly do that. Now, there's another faction of the world lining up with a potential gold standard in BRICS. What are your thoughts on BRICS? Well, in terms of uh, BRICS, I think uh, the idea that uh, somebody's going to supplant the United States, yes, you can grow and all that good stuff, but it's not going to happen if the U.S. gets its act together. Mm -hmm. The reason you're seeing all these uh, talk about getting rid of the dollar, BRICS and all that, mortar, I don't know what, what do they want to <laughs> call themselves, <laughs> but, 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 but it's happening because the U.S. has been floundering. Mm -hmm. And when we get in trouble, the rest of the world gets in trouble. We should have learned from the 80s when we get our act together the world becomes a much better place. Yeah, we, and, and it's not even floundering, we're lethargic, right? We're watching 32 nations launder Russian oil under sanctions through Saudi Arabia, who's supposed to be our partner in the currency space, and nothing's happening, there's no repercussions. Well, That's there's, pretty there, scary. There, there, there's no respect. Right. And uh, when you're a strong, vigorous, growing, self-confident mm -hmm. country, people take note. Absolutely. And no, they know we're not out there to seize their lands. They know uh, that uh, even they may not like us because we're big, right. but they also prefer to have us uh, dominating the world from our economic power than China. Mm. They, they don't want to be under the uh, thumb of a, Nobody a, of, a, of a regime where they have a social system where everyone's in a reality show because mm. uh, they're, they're, they're recording you 24 hours a day. And if you violate a certain something, you get privileges taken away. Is, right. that the, is that the kind of world we want? Well, it's the kind of world people are talking about. And no, nobody wants that world, but no, it's a great topic we can transition into with CBDCs. Right? So this is a big topic around the globe that very few people actually understand. What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, the idea of a central bank with a, with, with a digital currency, uh, first of all, they'll do it, uh, introduce it the way Obamacare was introduced. They'll make a hash of it. Mm -hmm. But the American people aren't going to tolerate something that infringes on their freedoms. And that's why these battles that are coming up over, should we have gas stoves? Mm -hmm. Should we have air conditioners that actually work? Dishwashers that can do a load in less than 10 hours? <laughs> and, and, and in New York, a pizza that is not artificial, but is actually cooked the traditional way with a, with a coal or a right. wood-burning stove. It's dangerous now, Steve. Oh, I know, it's I know. It, it, we might enjoy it. Oh, no. No, no can't have that. <laughs> if we enjoy ourselves, we're, we're the worst people in the world. Uh, Steve, I'm so aligned with what you're saying. Can we get you to run for president in 2024? I'm an agitator now. <laughs> and uh, and, and one, one of the things I'm agitating about, you, you made reference to, is it .org, are these stories of yes. inspiring people, like Clarence yes. Saunders inventing the supermarket, uh, where, you, where, you, where you're trusted. George Eastman turning uh, something of photography, very once very complicated, only a few people could do it, into something that everyone could have, turning scarcity into abundance. Uh, Malcolm McLean on the, on the, on the shipping. Any any Malone, a daughter of slaves, former slaves. So you're you're launching is it dot org. Is it dot org. I -Z -Z -I -T. Z -I -T org slash Forbes, and uh, you can find these episodes. We're on the second season. Mm -hmm. That's where we're doing Clarence Saunders and the like in Memphis. In Memphis, right here in Memphis. Uh, so you have not just FedEx, but you've had uh, the the supermarkets Piggly Wiggly. Piggly Wiggly. Great, 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 great name. Great name. And uh, just to give you one other example, uh, Margaret Rudd, uh, Ruddick uh, had a kid back in the 30s who uh, had uh, eating troubles, couldn't eat processed breads, and so she uh, decided to invent a bread that her son could eat. Hmm. She invented what we call whole wheat bread. Necessity is the mother of all invention. And, and, and uh, she named the, the bread and then her other products after the farm she was on, Pepperidge Farm. Hmm. And uh, she went to Europe and got a formula for chocolate that made those great cookies. She went to Switzerland, the inspiration for goldfish mm. that our, we, we, I think we all about love. Thirty-five hundred dollars on goldfish for my kids <laughs> over the course of their lives. Yeah. So, so, so these are the kind of stories that uh, you don't preach saying free markets are good. Say, here, real life examples of well, people Steve, you, in action. You are an agitator. So, in in this world, they want kids to not know history. They want kids to focus on things that are obsolete in Ignorance their education. Ignorance is a tool of control. Yes. A tool of uh, tyranny. But yet now, it, it, what you're doing with launching is it, 
is you're, you're creating inspirational videos of our founding fathers, of people who've renovated or innovated industries to inspire kids to sell it, to say to them, you can do this too. And for adults to look at things, for, like the inspiration you're providing through this program, I think is, is irreplaceable at this time in history. And, and, and they're interesting. Yes. These are interesting people. Absolutely. You want to know more about them. And also they've had setbacks. You know, life, life is not easy. Wait, so, wait, well, you're telling kids life isn't easy? You're not going to give them a trophy just for showing up? <laughs> okay, all right, I'm no, on board no, with this they'll story. they'll be inspired to uh, create the trophies. <laughs> <laughs> and earn a profit from doing yes. it. Steve, this is incredible. So is, is it live right now? So season one yes. is done. Where can season they see one. it? At org? At that yeah, I-Z-Z-I-T dot org slash Forbes. Uh, they do other things, is it? It's an educational platform, but uh, they, they have our uh, first 10 episodes. We're in the process of making a dozen others, including Clarence Saunders from awesome. Memphis, Tennessee. That's going to be great. So we can we can send that link out with this posting yes. here, get people coming in. Can they contribute to It's a .org. Is it a nonprofit foundation? Nonprofit. Are you taking contributions and donations? Uh, they are. And, uh, Fantastic. Because they're, 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 they're trying to get the, the good messages out, the inspirational stories out, education stories out. Fantastic. In a way that kids like it, and adults too. Yes. These are great stories. Well, I'm in. You can count me in as a customer on that <laughs> immediately. So I'm going to be getting this to my children today. Steve, one final question. We're in the energy business. Are you bullish on energy, bearish on energy? What are you seeing moving forward in oil and gas, especially oil and gas? Well, without energy, we don't have a life. Mm -hmm. uh, go back to the caves. Not very nice. They get very damp. Not, not good for your health. <laughs> so uh, this crazy war on fossil fuels will come to an end. We need more energy than ever before. You take the cloud, for example, the amount of energy it uses now, consumes now, exceeds twice the level of Japan, the third largest economy in the world. You have people around the world as they start to grow again more and more car consumption and the like. So we're gonna need energy as ever before, more available energy. So the sooner the government stops this silly war, the idea that uh, windmills are gonna replace and solar panels, which are hard to recycle, hello, uh, out of the way, and we can get back to uh, doing what we do well, uh, you're gonna see a big change. I think it's gonna happen after the 2024 elections. People are gonna ask, why are we dependent on Venezuela, Russia, and uh, uh, Saudi Arabia instead of uh, doing it here at home. Uh, we should be calling the tune, not them. Well, and you went right into a topic that I talked about in my panel. People are not equating the mounting wars ahead of AI and quantum computing. If you want to have quantum computers that actually solve a lot of problems around the world, you need an intense, intense amount of energy to do so. And uh, so you need abundant energy. And the thing about the U.S., in real terms, we'll find other ways to do it even cheaper. And uh, that's, how you, uh, that's how civilization moves ahead. It's been true for 250 years. And Washington may be ignorant of that, but uh, the voters, I think, are going to remind them, uh, let's do what we know we can do. Absolutely. Steve, thank you so much. Thank I you. appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching this interview. There are plenty more behind you. All you have to do is click the link below. If you're interested in investing in oil and gas, please feel free to go to kingoperating.com or reach out to us directly. Enjoy the show.